Good morning. Good morning. The title of the Lord's message for today is Lessons from the Wise Men. Our scripture text reading is found in Matthew chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of beer. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another Dami dami na po mga Christmas decorations dito po. For most people, malapit na kasi ang ilalim pagdiwang yung traditional na December 25, Christmas Day. That is why we can see many Christmas decorations at different houses. In the malls, in the streets, buildings, public places, and many other places. Especially the colorful lights which they turn on at night. Nami mga kumukutikutikat na ilaw sa gabi. One of the most common Christmas decorations is the nativity scene, supposedly commemorating the birth of our Lord Jesus. Ano nga po ba sa Filipino ang nativity scene? Belen. Madaming may ganyan decoration. You will see lots of belens. You will notice in many nativity scenes or belens, the presence of three men holding gifts. So who were those men? Where did they come from? What were their names? Were these men actually free in the world? When did they visit our Lord Jesus? Kasabay ba sila ng mga shepherds who visited and honored our Lord Jesus when He was still in the manger? Were these men kings? What were their gifts? What are the good lessons that they are teaching us? So let's open our Bibles and learn about these characters. Let, let us read Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 up to 12, which also includes our scripture text reading at the start of the Lord's message. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, and I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way 
and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in the dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So after reading what the Gospel writer Matthew wrote in Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12, we can now answer the questions earlier. There were many theories given about the origin of these men who visited our Lord Jesus. But let us regard them as, as theories. What the Bible revealed to us is these wise men simply came from the East. Kapag sa Filipino translation, when we say North, ano po ba ang North sa Filipino mga kapatid? Nilaga. When we say South, When we say West, Kanduran. And when we say East, Silangan. So these wise men came from the East to Jerusalem. Nanggaling sila sa Silangan. That's all we have to know about their origin. That's what was revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. The word Magi, spelled M-A-G-I. Magi came from the Greek word magoi, M-A-G-O-I, which means wise men. Wise men is used in the King James Version, the New King James Version, and the ASB versions of the Bible. Contextually, these wise men were faithful to God, whom God miraculously directed through His star to find our Lord Jesus. In Matthew chapter 2, we learn that the Lord Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of the wicked king Herod. The wise men from the east asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews because we have come to worship him. Instead of being happy and rejoicing that the Lord had come, Herod was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. Herod was angry that somebody might challenge his rule as a king. What Herod and his advisors thought was that Jesus would be an earthly king. But we know that was a wrong thinking because in John chapter 18, verse 36, Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So what Herod did next was he summoned all of the people's chief priests, teachers of the law, scholars, advisors, and officials to tell him where's the Christ child and where had he been born. They all base their information from the prophecy of Micah, the prophet. They told wicked King Herod that the Messiah was born in Bethlehem in Judea. Then Herod called the wise men secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then Herod ordered the wise men to go to Bethlehem, search carefully for the child, and as soon as they find the Christ child, they should report to Herod so that he may also go there and worship the Christ child. But we know from the Bible that Herod was lying. Herod's real motive was to find Jesus and murder him. 
after the king instructed the wise men, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child Jesus was. The star was sent by God to direct the wise men. The star was a unique or one of a kind special source of light that led and guided the wise men exactly to where the Christ child was. The wise men, as revealed to us by the Bible, follow this God-sent star from the east all the way to where the Lord Jesus was. While God guided the wise men with the star in the sky, tayo naman today, we follow the light of the gospel. Without God's help, the wise men wouldn't have known that the Christ child was born. That he was born in Bethlehem and where they could find him in a house. These facts are evidences that God recognized these wise men as his true followers. When the wise men found the house where the Lord Jesus was staying with his mother Mary, they were filled with joy. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. After that, God warned the wise men in a dream not to go back to Herod. They obeyed God and returned to their country by another way. When the wise men left, an angel of God appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He took the child Jesus and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where they stayed. When King Herod found out that the wise men did not return to him and outwitted him, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, according to the time he had learned from the wise men when the Lord Jesus was born. Ganun po pa sa King Herod. Then the slaughter of the big number of boys who were two years old and under began, and it fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah. There was great mourning and weeping in Bethlehem and its vicinity because of the order of the wicked king, Herod. So after the death of Herod, an angel of God appeared in a dream to Joseph, who was in Egypt with Mary and Jesus. The angel of God told Joseph to get up, take Jesus and his mother Mary, and go to the land of Israel. Those who were trying to kill the child Jesus Dead. Joseph obeyed, took Jesus and his mother Mary, and went to Israel. But when Joseph heard that Herod's son, Archelaus, was the king of Judea, he was afraid to take his family there. Joseph was born in a dream and instead went to the district of Galilee, where he, Mary, and the child Jesus lived in a town called Nazareth. So the prophecy of the prophets were fulfilled that the Lord Jesus would grow up in that place and would be called a Nazarene. Kaya po ang tawag kay Lord Jesus ay Nazarene. Nazarene or yung tinatawag natin Nazareno. Dahil dun po siya lumaki sa Nazareth. Jesus Nazareno. Si Paul, lumaki si Jesus sa Nazareth. Kaya Nazareth po siya, patulad po ng ibang mga tao na nakatira doon sa Nazareth, tawag sa kanila ay mga Nazareno. So what are the valuable lessons that we can learn from the wise men and their visit to the child Jesus? Here are the following lessons from the said biblical events. Lesson number one, mga kapatid, 
The Bible did not say December 25 is the birthday of our Lord Jesus. No one knows either the day or month in which Christ was born. All are just theories. If God had desired men to celebrate a day for the birth of His Son, Jesus, He would have revealed it easily in His Holy Word and had given us instruction about it. Even if you read the Bible about the birth of the Lord Jesus as many times as you can, you will not find any passage that will say the exact day or month the Lord Jesus was born. In the Bible, there is no word used as Christmas, referring to the birth of our Lord Jesus. If we will read the history of Christmas, it came from human origin and not from the word of God. It is a mixture of human and pagan ideas. Ang nireveal lang sa atin ng Bible, mga kapatid, ay the Lord Jesus was born. No exact day and month were written about His birth. So we will just stick with that. Dapat happy na tayo and contented tayo sa nireveal sa atin ng Bible. We speak when the Bible speaks. We are silent when the Bible is silent. So by the way, brothers and sisters, do you know the meaning of Bethlehem, where the Lord Jesus was born? Bethlehem means house of bread. House of bread. It was appropriate as the birthplace of our Lord Jesus because Jesus is the bread of life. We can read that in John chapter 6 verse 35 and verse 40. Lesson number 2, mga kapatid. The Bible did not reveal to us the exact number of the wise men. Human traditions lang ang nagsasabi na matiyo daw ang wise men. Perhaps this was because the gifts they presented to the child Jesus were three kinds of expensive gifts. However, the Bible just said wise men. The wise men were in plural form. Wise man, singular, di ba po? Wise men, plural. So, plural form means more than one. So, the wise men were more than one. More than one can mean the wise men can be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so forth, and so on. Because the Bible did not reveal any actual number of the wise men, we should be glad and contented with that revelation that the wise men were more than one. Lesson number three. The Bible did not reveal the names of the wise men. Human traditions lang po ang nagsasabi na ang mga pangalan ng wise men ay ano ba? Melchor, Gaspar, Balthazar. Yung mga ibang kaklasiko ng high school, nilo ka nito. Ah, si ano yan? Mo, Larry, tsaka si Gerby. Sabi naman ng iba, ah, si Jan, si Paul, tsaka si Rico. Nasa si Gerby. <laughs> so, but the Bible did not give us actual names of the wise men. Nadali lang naman mag-invento ng mga pangalan ng wise men, di ba? But we have to abide by the Bible. Since the Bible did not reveal to us the actual names of the wise men, we'll have to be happy with that. The Bible simply called them the wise men or Magi from the East. So let's just call them the wise men or Magi from the East. Lesson number four. The three types of gifts which were given to honor our Lord Jesus were symbolic. Three types of gifts were given to honor our Lord Jesus. Perhaps because of the three types of gifts, some people assume that there were three wise men na din. But it doesn't follow that if there were three types of gifts, three wise men na din ang nagbigay. 
since the Bible did not reveal the actual number of the wise men. The speculation lamang po yun, na ang three types of gifts to our Lord Jesus is equivalent to three wise men. We will speak with what the Bible just revealed to us. The clear thing that the Bible revealed to us were the three types of gifts which the wise men gave to honor our Lord Jesus. Yeah. These gifts are not just gifts like someone giving a gift kasi wala lang or trick lang, ganun lang ba yun yung binigay ng wise men kasi wala lang, trick lang, wala silang mag-isip. Yeah. Hindi po ganun yan. Ano? The three types of gifts which were given to honor our Lord Jesus were symbolic and the very best gifts not mere scraps or tira-tira lang nila. The wise men gave the Lord Jesus go bakit? To acknowledge Him as their King. The gold represented Jesus' royalty as the King. A King who is above all earthly kings whose kingdom is not of this world. With that, we will remember what Pilate said to the Lord Jesus in John chapter 18, verse 37. Sabi ni Pilate sa kanya, You are a king then. Then the Lord Jesus answered, You are right in saying, I am a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Apostle Paul also wrote in Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 to 11, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on us. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father the wise men also gave the Lord Jesus frankincense or incense as their God frankincense was an expensive resin with fragrance and makamukuyo that was used in religious offerings it symbolized Jesus' divinity, that Jesus is their God. The third type of gift which the wise men gave to honor our Lord Jesus was mirror. Mirror was another expensive resin with a fragrant smell, mabangodin puyo, that was used in embalming the body of someone who just died. Near represented the Lord Jesus' death on the cross to save us from our sins. Brothers and sisters, can we memorize and put in our hearts the gifts of the wise men to our Lord Jesus and their symbolic name? The wise men gave the Lord Jesus the gifts of gold as king, frankincense as God, and near as the Lord Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. Read it natin. Gold is king. Frankincense is God. Mere death for our sins. Read it po natin. Gold is king. Frankincense God. Mere death or death on the cross for our sins. O, oh, pag gano'n na tayo, mag-game tayo para sa mga bata. Bata, mga bata, gusto niyo ba ng chocolate? Hindi oh, oh. mga bata ito. Bata, sorry. Bata. Mga bata. Mga bata. Okay. Spell natin yung gold, frankincense, tsaka mirror, ha? Okay. At ang example na ito, Zoe, can you spell gold? Ha? G-O-L-E. Okay, very good. Frankincense, so. Oh. F-R-A-N-K-I-N-C-E-N-S-E. Okay, very good. F-R-A-N-K-I-N-C-E-N-S-E. 
And then yung meter, so? Very good. M-Y-R-R-H. Okay. So, ang makakaspell ng gold, ibigyan ko ng chocolate. Nasaan si Sherry's? Sherry's? Yan ka ba, Sherry's? Sherry's? Spell gold, Sherry's. Again, again, go. G. O. Okay, very good. Frankincense naman. Ito, medyo mahaba. Frankincense. O, hindi ko yung frankincense, ha? F-R-A-N-K-I-N-C-E-N-S-E. Ethan? Carlo? Frankincense. F-R-A-N-K-I-N-S. No, no, C. Another try. Second, if the wise men were indeed three kings from the east, 
they would have traveled with their battalions of soldiers, numerous servants, officials, and queens to give honor to our Lord Jesus. That would have scared King Herod and his kingdom, and the other kingdoms where they passed. It would have looked like an invasion, not some sort of visit. Wars would have resulted during their search for Jesus. Obviously, the wise men were not kings, but men who were held in high esteem for their learning and faith in God. Lesson number seven. The wise men visited the Lord Jesus in a house, not in a manger. When we study the scriptures, the wise men did not visit the child Jesus together with the shepherds. So don't get confused with the usual and traditional nativity scene or the Belen that we see on Christmas decorations that put the shepherds and wise men together. Let us follow the scriptures. The Bible says it was the shepherds who visited the child Jesus on the night he was born, while he was in a manger. We can read that in the accounts of the Gospel writer Luke. How about the wise men? Kailan sila nakabisita kay Lord Jesus? When we read Matthew chapter 2 verse 11, we will find out that on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Clearly, the Word of God taught us that the wise men visited the Lord Jesus in the house, not in a stable anymore on the night of His birth, and not when Jesus was in a manger in a stable. By the way, brothers and sisters, what's the difference between a stable and a manger? In a stable, it is the building where animals like horses, cows, and chickens are placed in the building. In manger, it is a feeding trough. Yung lalagyan ng pagkain ng mga animals sa loob ng stable. Yun po ang manger. So imagine how the Lord Jesus humbled Himself and had that kind of birth in this world. His first bed was in a manger in a stable. Sa lalagyan ng pagkain ng mga hayo. He did that to save us from our sins. The Lord Jesus did all of that for us. So from the information that the Bible has given us, the Lord Jesus was about two years old na po. He was about two years old already when the wise men came to offer him their precious gifts. When the wise men visited the Lord Jesus, Joseph, Mary, and the Lord Jesus were no longer living in a stable. They were already living in a house. So what took them so long? About two years old as the Lord Jesus na mabisita ng mga wise men. One of the obvious reasons why it took them about two years to locate Jesus was because God protected the wise men, as well as Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, from being found by King Herod, who wanted to kill Jesus. Lesson number eight, brothers and sisters, the wise men were joyful and excited to go to Jesus to give their gifts and worship Him. During the time of King Herod, the promised Messiah has come, and the prophecies about the Lord Jesus' birth were fulfilled. And yet, King Herod, his advisors, the chief priests, teachers of the law, and majority of Jerusalem did not rejoice over that witness to God. Instead, all of them were disturbed when the Lord Jesus was born. And like what I have discussed earlier, King Herod wanted to kill the Lord Jesus. Moreover, the majority were also busy with other stuff that they just couldn't find the time to visit Jesus who was born 
a few months away lamang sa kanilang lugar. Kung sino pa yung mga manalabit kay Lord Jesus, sila pa ang hindi nag-rejoice. But pumunta sa kanya when he was born. The prophet Isaiah had a right prophecy that the Lord Jesus was rejected, despised, and men esteemed him not. You can read that in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 2 to 3. John wrote in John chapter 1, verse 11, that the Lord Jesus came unto his home, and his home received him not. Kung sino ba yung nakatira sa malayang lugar, which were the wise men from the east, sila pa ang naging joyful and excited to go to Jesus to give their gifts and worship Him. So let's have the same attitude like that of the wise men. We should be joyful and excited to go to our Lord Jesus to offer our best and worship Him every Sunday. Lesson number nine, mga kapatid. The wise men gave their everything and were willing to pay the price to find our Lord Jesus. The wise men came from the east and it took them about two years before they found the Lord Jesus. To give you an, an idea about the distance of the journey of the wise men, if they came from a particular place from the east up to the location of our Lord Jesus, uh, for example, if the wise men were from Arabia, their travel going to Jesus would be about 200 miles. If they came from Persia, they would have traveled for about 300 miles. If they came from Chaldea, they would have traveled some 500 miles. But of course, God did not leave the wise men directly to where the Lord Jesus was located to protect him from King Herod. That is why dadagdagan pa natin yun. There were additional travel time, distance, and other factors because the wise men were able to locate the Lord Jesus when he was two years old. Men who were not physically fit could not have attempted the long, tiring trip that the wise men did. Obviously, the wise men were physically fit to have lasted in a long, tiring travel like that. Just imagine riding a camel's back or a donkey's back for a very long time. It could have been very difficult and tiring. You have to consider the roads way back then, which were rough with many stumbling blocks, wild animals, and bandits. Travelers like the wise men would be hurt or get killed by them. The wise men were carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So for security, they may have carried weapons with them, as well as plenty of their servants during their travel. The wise men also had to consider the weather. They had to bring along plenty of foods, water, blankets, clothes, and other needs during their long journey to visit and honor the Lord Jesus. But of course, they wouldn't have managed to travel that long and locate the Lord Jesus without God's help, guidance, and protection. How about you, brothers and sisters? Can you last for about two years of travel, riding a donkey or camel, just to see someone that important. Just to see and honor and worship the Lord Jesus. The wise men were able to do that because nobody could stop them from seeing the Lord Jesus. For the wise men, Jesus is their everything. They're all in all. <coughs> and lesson number 10, mga kapatid. The wise men followed God, not men. The wise men would not have given everything that they've got to visit the Lord Jesus if they were not following God. Because they followed God, they followed His Holy Word. Because they listened to God's voice and not men and not Herod, the wise men had their hope in their Savior and King, 
who is the Lord Jesus. Because the wise men followed God, they sought the Lord Jesus until they found Him to give their very best gifts and worship Him. Like what the Apostle Peter and the other Apostles answered in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, we ought to obey God rather than men. Tayo din, let us follow God and His holy word, men, not men. For our summary and conclusion, brothers and sisters, let us remember the valuable lessons from the wise men of the East who visited the Lord Jesus according to the Bible. The valuable lessons are, number one, the Bible did not say December 25 is the birthday of our Lord Jesus. Number two, the Bible did not reveal to us the exact number of the wise men. Number two, the Bible did not reveal the names of the wise men. Number four, the three types of gifts which the wise men gave to honor our Lord Jesus were symbolic. Gold as king, frankincense as God, and near as his death on the cross for our sins. Number five, the gifts that the wise men gave to the Lord Jesus prove that God is all-knowing and provident. Number six, the wise men were not kings. Number seven, the wise men visited the Lord Jesus in a house, not in a manger. Number eight, the wise men were joyful and excited to go to Jesus to give their gifts and worship. Number nine, the wise men gave their everything and were willing to pay the price to find our Lord Jesus. And number ten, the wise men followed God, not men. If you have seen a car sticker that says, Wise men still seek Jesus. Wise men still seek Jesus. That should be our attitude for We should be like the wise men. Their attitude is like what the Lord Jesus instructed us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We shouldn't be the opposite of the wise men. The opposite of wise men in the dictionary is wise guys. Wise guys are defined by the dictionary as rude or pastos, conceited or minaba, someone who thinks too highly of himself, and someone who breaks the law. The synonym of wise guy is mobster, criminal, outlaw, thug, hoodlum. Good and cook. The wise guy has the same attitude like that of King Herod. Like King Herod, most wise guys will not be happy to hear the good news from the Lord Jesus. Most wise guys kasi, are disturbed by Jesus. Instead of seeking Jesus and worshiping Jesus, most wise guys will reject Jesus and will not honor him. So there are so many wise guys and heralds in this world when it comes to the Lord Jesus and His gospel. But I believe that not all wise guys will reject the Lord Jesus and His gospel. That's why we have to share the gospel with them and all the lost souls out there. Let us be their life that they may see our good deeds, praise our Father in heaven, and lead them to Christ. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35 says, The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up in shame. In the biblical story of the wise men and King Herod, the wise men inherited honor for their faith and what they did to honor and worship the Lord Jesus. The wise men have a good name, Babok. Like what King Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1, 
A good name is better than fine perfume. And also in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1, A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. On the other hand, King Herod was a fool for rejecting and trying to kill the Lord Jesus. And God, up to this day, held Herod up in shame. He has a bad name and a bad reputation. Although the wise men who visited and honored the Lord Jesus are no longer living here on earth, their good examples, good influence, and good reputation live on. Like what Revelation chapter 14 verse 13 says, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write, Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor for their deeds will follow them. According to Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 to 24, the truly wise do not glory in his wisdom, might, or riches, but in his understanding and knowing the true God. Apostle James, the brother of our Lord Jesus, wrote in James chapter 3, verse 17, The wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and sincere. Ganyan po ang pagiging wise in the Lord. Dapat malinis sa kamang kayapa, banayad, madaling panatingan, puspos ng kaawaan, at ng mabubuting bunga. Walang inaayunan, walang pagpapanimbabaw. For all of us Christians today, the wise men are among our role models in the Bible when it comes to seeking, following, honoring, and worshiping our Lord Jesus, who is the Son of God, our Savior, and the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Brothers and sisters, let us be wise like the wise men. Pwede po ba natin ulitin na? I am wise like the wise men. I am wise like the wise men. So to all of our loved ones, friends, guests, and viewers in the internet, who want to be wise, like the wise men who followed God and sought the Lord Jesus, no matter what the costs and risks were, until they found Him to honor and worship Him, the Lord Jesus is inviting all of you to become Christians by honoring Him and giving His gospel. The gospel is the Lord Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And then he was buried and then raised on the third day. All we have to do next is to believe and have faith in our Lord Jesus, repent of your sins, confess Christ as the Son of God, be baptized and immersed for the remission of sin. Then the Lord will add you to his church. Be faithful and wise like the wise man. Follow honor and worship the Lord Jesus until the end. All who will be wise like the wise men and faithful to the Lord Jesus until the end will receive from the Lord eternal life. For what Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 is telling us, we will receive the crown of life from the Lord. Good morning po and God bless. Advance Happy Holidays and Happy New Year.